I'm not ashamed. What was the seventh plague that God inflicted upon Egypt? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse-by-verse -verse study of the book of Exodus on walking through the Bible. It's worth the glory of his cross. If you have a Bible with you, turn to Exodus chapter 9. We're going to be reading from verses 13 to 21. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So, Exodus chapter 9, beginning of verse 13. Then the Lord said to Moses, Rise early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go that they may serve me. For at this time I will send all my plagues to your very heart and on your servants and on your people that you may know that there is none like me in all the earth. Now if I had stretched out my hand and struck you and your people with pestilence, then you would have been cut off from the earth. But indeed for this purpose I have raised you up that I may show my power in you and that my name may be declared in all the earth. As yet you exalt yourself against my people, in that you will not let them go. Behold, tomorrow about this time I will cause very heavy hail to rain down, such as has not been in Egypt since its founding until now. Therefore send, out, send now and gather your livestock and all that you have in the field, for hail shall come down on every man and every animal which is found in the field, and is not brought home, and they shall die. He who feared the word of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh made his servants and his livestock flee to the houses. But he who did not regard the word of the Lord left his servants and his livestock in the field. In this episode, we continue our look at the plagues God inflicted upon Egypt as a result of Pharaoh's refusal to let the children of Israel go. We thus far have seen six plagues. The plague of the water of the Nile turning into blood. The plague of an overabundance of frogs brought out of the Nile the plague of lice or ticks, the plague of flies, the plague of pestilence or disease causing death among all the cattle in the field, and the plague of boils, skin ulcers that turn into running sores. Pharaoh was given a chance after each of these plagues to obey the word of the Lord, but after each time he refused, and so God continued plaguing Egypt. This seventh plague is the first plague in the third set of plagues with the final plague standing on its own. It is the plague of hail. God again showed his mercy to Pharaoh in that before he sent this plague, he gave Pharaoh a chance to obey his voice. He sent Moses and Aaron to him, demanding that Pharaoh let the children of Israel go. God told him that this plague would not be like the rest of the plagues he had sent, for this plague would go to their very heart. What did God mean by this? Well, up to this point, God's plagues affected the body of Pharaoh and those around him. However, this plague would be so powerful that it would show Pharaoh how powerless he was against an almighty God. God warned Pharaoh that he could reach down and strike them with pestilence, like he did with the cattle earlier, but if he did that, they would no longer exist. God did not want to wipe the Pharaoh and the Egyptians off the map. He wanted to show his power in them. In fact, God said that it was for this purpose that he raised up Pharaoh in the first place. We have discussed numerous times already how God never forced Pharaoh to disobey him that Pharaoh always had free choice. But here we find out that God again sometimes raises up evil people for the purpose of not only showing his power, but to inflict punishment and judgment upon a people. God could have raised up a righteous king that would immediately let Israel go. But if he did that, not only would Egypt not be punished for their treatment of Israel, but Israel wouldn't appreciate what God did for them. They might even want to return to Egypt if God promised to keep raising up good kings. God picked this man Pharaoh to be king in order that he might show his power and judge his e Egypt. God picked this man because he was already evil. Pharaoh didn't become evil because God picked him. He was evil before God picked him. If this Pharaoh was righteous, God would have picked someone else. God knew the heart of this man and therefore knew what his response would be when presented with these plagues. That is how powerful the God of heaven is. Because Pharaoh hadn't heeded the word of the Lord and would continue to do so, instead exalting himself over his people Israel, the next day God would send hail upon the land, the likes of which had never been seen in all of Egypt's history. We know that hail has the potential of being very damaging. Small pebble-sized hail won't do much damage, but golf ball to tennis ball-sized hail can break windows and hurt people if they're not careful. This hail would be so bad that whatever was in the field, whether man or beast, would die if they were out there. What we find next is amazing if you think about it. 
Egypt, Egypt was an idolatrous nation, yet the previous sixth plague had softened the hearts of some of the servants of Pharaoh to the point that they respected the word of the Lord and removed their cattle from the field and had their servants remain indoors so as not to die. However, there were still others, still with a hard heart, who did not heed the word of the Lord, and they left their livestock and servants out in the field. We'll continue with this story, the Lord willing, in the next episode. With that, our time is up for today. Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Exodus chapter 9, verses 22 to 26, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world. Of his cross.